Still we are expecting cold weather for the next couple of days, but then we'll have a slow warm up and we'll likely see temperatures by the weekend reach into the upper 30s and 40s. So we are starting to see those showers move toward the lake shore, so you will notice a Yo, 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 what's good? This is John for Recognize, not one but two Z's. And right here, I got one of the dopest, I mean, one of the dopest weatherman there is here in Cleveland. Um, he's stationed at Channel 3 News. His name is Marcus Walter. How's it going, man? You know, it's going good. Happy you all were able to come check out the station today. Yeah, pretty it, cool. Yeah, pretty cool, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for having us. You know, this is like a, one of the biggest um, tours we ever had. Just you bringing us around the whole, you know, Showing us around, like, the cameras and stuff, man. That was real dope because one day I'm going to own one of these cameras, you know. And, and I always say, you know, don't forget about us little people when you blow up. So <laughs> I'm never going to forget this interview, man. Um, so uh, I want to start off and say, man, um, how you get started? You know, what made you just um, um, want to become a, a meteorologist? Did I say that right? Oh, you said it right. You said it right. Meteorologist, you had it right. So uh, it's interesting. I've always had an interest in weather ever since I was younger, and I noticed it around age 12. I would watch uh, this channel called The Weather Channel. Uh, many of you can get it through cable. Uh, they talked about weather all the time. I would always watch whenever, they, whenever there were hurricanes or tornadoes or any type of crazy weather. Uh, that's what kept me tuned into that channel. Also, I grew up in suburban Chicago, and just like Cleveland, we get a lot of intense uh, winter weather. And I remember so many years being buried by snow, not being able to go to school, not being able to go out, you know, the grocery store because there's so much snow out there. So those things triggered that initial thought of weather. Uh, but I officially made it made a decision to pursue meteorology after I met a meteorologist back in Chicago. And, uh, you know, he let me know he, he enjoys his job. It's something he's always wanted to do. And it just worked out. So I've been interested and I follow my path ever since pretty much 12 years old okay um tell, okay um so you say y'all you, had bad snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. bad snow bad snow oh yeah oh yeah well in chicago you know y'all um um y'all weather is a little worse than ours yeah just it's a little worse in chicago i think just because um it's flatter and uh the winds pick up a lot more in the winter time you know the windy city well it's called yeah, the windy yeah. city for a reason yeah. it gets real windy and if you've ever been to chicago or if you have family there they call it the hawk you know uh, that cold yeah. intense wind uh that's what you experience in the winter time so that's what got me interested in weather mm, okay okay what, what was like the the worst weather that you ever experienced like growing up like you just like oh nah you know oh well actually i think it relates to those winter storms right so we love snow especially for sledding and things like that mm -hmm. but it's not fun when you're trapped in the house for two days because the plowman hasn't come to your block to clear the block to clear your driveway uh, so that was probably some of the worst weather but again you know i still loved it right it's a love-hate relationship mm -hmm. uh there was it any times that you felt like man oh man i quit this job man i quit man this weather is just too severe you know oh <gasps> Well, so there there hasn't been a point yet where I felt like I wanted to quit my job in TV weather. Although there have been moments where, you know, it's been real tough. It's been real tough. And I think we all have those tough moments in life. Uh, just a little bit about my background. So before I got here to Cleveland, I worked in uh, New York City for a show called Good Morning America. And that was a great experience, but they worked you to death. Literally, I worked about 84 hours every single week. And... I learned this in college. It's 162 hours in a week. Mm. And I was working 84 of those hours when normal people, you know, work 40 to 50 hours a week. So, I mean, it was times where I was like, look, I can't keep up with this schedule. It's so intense. But again, it was what I love to do. Mm. So I made it work. And fortunately here in Cleveland, my hours are a lot more reasonable in terms of 40 hours per week. Yeah. My schedule just may vary throughout the week. How, how was your experience being on Good Morning America? Like, what was your position? All right, so I worked behind the scenes at Good Morning America, and I worked with the weather anchor at the time, uh, Sam Champion. I also worked with Ginger Z, who's still there now. And basically, any and everything that was related to them and weather and the show, I was connected to. So it was a great experience. You did a lot of cool things. You had a lot of fun experiences. But again, they just, they worked you. It's, it's no joke. And if you meet people from New York City, you know that that's sort of the, the characteristic of the city. Everybody works a lot. Mm -hmm. And I was just one of them. But it was, it was a lot of fun. But I'm very grateful to be here in Cleveland doing what I've always wanted to do, which is work on camera for weather. Right, right. So, um... 
what like what was like the most embarrassing moments that you ever had on TV? Yeah, good question. It actually happened my uh, my first year here in Cleveland, uh, and we actually still have evidence of this. Uh, what happened? So basically, I'm on the 7 p.m. newscast with uh, Jim Donovan. Uh, who's one of our sports anchors and news anchors here, and also Robin Swoboda. She used to work here. She also used to work at a couple of other stations in town. I'm there. I'm working with them, um, and we're about to come to weather. But um, as they're reading the story, my chair that I'm sitting in cracks. And so Robin says off to me on the side, she's like, was that your chair that just cracked? And I, I knew it cracked, but I'm thinking, okay, as long as we get to weather and I can get up and get to the key, and chroma key where we do the weather, uh, you know, somebody can come and replace that chair and it won't be any issues. All right, so they come up to us. We're all sitting at the desk. We're doing our usual news weather chat. Then they go to me for weather. And, and as I'm pushing up off the chair, it just collapses. Oh. Now, at this point, the camera has already shifted toward the graphics. So people at home, they're watching, they're hearing me talk, and then they just hear this boom, 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 boom. And then they hear me and Robin and Jimmy just laughing hysterically. So I get over to the key. I'm trying to keep my composure, but I'm still laughing. And then finally, halfway through the weathercast, I get it back together. But then at the end, I start chuckling again because they're still laughing. They're cracking jokes. They are literally having a field day with my chair collapse. Uh, so that was probably an embarrassing but still a fun moment here. Oh. Funny thing about that, that video was like one of our highest rated videos for a couple of months on Google and our website because people, they just kept watching. I got to go watch it myself. No, I <laughs> sorry about that, but I got to go see that one. <laughs> so um, what is your predictions for um, this winter? Ah, that's a good question. So as of now, you may have heard of this thing called El Nino. It basically says, or it's what the word that they use to describe warm water west of South America. So we have a strong El Nino starting to develop, and that typically means milder winters for us here in Cleveland. And we know over the past couple of years, it's been rough in terms of how cold it's been and even how much snow the previous two winters. So I think this winter may actually be a little more tranquil compared to the past several. It still will get cold at times, but it won't be probably as bad as what we've seen over the past couple of years. All right, that's cool. That's cool because I remember my senior year in high school um, in 2011. <laughs> that 2011 summer was the best um, – I said summer, excuse me. Um, winter? Yeah, winter. I'm yeah. sorry, excuse me. Um, because it wasn't a winter. It wasn't. It wasn't here? No, I wasn't here yet, but I kept an eye on the weather, obviously. And a lot of the country, you know, they didn't really experience a severe winter in 2011, except for the folks who live in the Northeast. They got hit with a whole bunch of blizzards. So New York City, Boston, mm -hmm. Philadelphia, they got hit hard. Oh. But everybody else, hey, they were okay. <laughs> Yeah, because I remember on Christmas, no, New Year's Eve, 2000, 2011, 2011, yeah, 2011, yeah. it was so, it, it felt like, it was like Bahamas and Cleveland, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it was so, it, was, it wasn't it was hot, but it felt like the late Aprils, yeah. you know, in Cleveland. 